Good morning, America. I'm Charles Gibson. And I'm Lisa McCree. Carly Simon is with us in this half oh, hour. I love her. Your favorites? I love her. One of mine, too. She has released a new album. It is an album that, as they say, evokes Hollywood's atmospheric film noir era. I have the faintest idea what that means. <laughs> uh, I went and asked a bunch of our producers what film noir is, and they said, I don't know. <laughs> um, so then somebody handed me a piece of paper. It is uh, film noir are those movies that come complete with shadowy nights, shifty lovers, dangerous dames, and questionable motives. All in her voice, she tells you that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> if right. she can do that in her voice in one album, she's, she's pretty good, and indeed she is good. We're going to hear the new sound of this film noir album this morning, and actually uh, we're going to go behind the scenes into a rehearsal with her. Oh. Chantal is going to talk to her this morning. That'd be terrific. To quote one of her most memorable hits, nobody does it better. With a new album of songs from movies called Film Noir and a new book for children, Carly Simon has shown once again that her talent is both enduring and versatile. And Chantal recently caught up with Carly at her home for some talk and some music. One, In Martha's Vineyard last week, we sat in on one very special rehearsal. Every time we say goodbye, I die a little. If you've ever had your heart broken, then it's pretty likely you've listened to a Carly Simon song somewhere along the line. Oh, I know you've had some bad luck with ladies before. For many of us, she wrote the soundtrack to our lives with a career that spans 30 years and an amazing 25 albums. She just seems to have a knack for singing the songs that really touch the raw emotion in all of us. It's never been a business for me. Something about going after the truth and you listen to a song and you say, that's it, that's what, I, that's what I'm feeling. Exactly. And I think that's always the work of art is to make the viewer or the listener feel as if, oh yeah, I can, I, I can understand that emotion, I can understand that feeling now. Maybe I couldn't before, but mm -hmm. this makes me get to it. There's no love song fiber, but how strange the change from major to minor. Her collaboration with her ex-husband James Taylor, also a musical legend, brought forth not only some great songs, but her proudest accomplishments, her beautiful daughter Sally, and her talented son, Ben. children have always been very, very central in my life, and their happiness really has a lot to do with whether I'm happy and doing, doing well. Are you not astonished when you hear his voice, how much he sounds like his father? I can see that, but to me he sounds very, very much like Ben. It's like if you have two children and other people think they look a lot alike, yeah. but you can tell the you know, difference in your twins. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, they, there's, a certain, there's a certain element in their phrasing, which is extremely similar, but they have very different voices. I mean, mm -hmm. if you really listen to the actual sound the vocal cords make, it's a, very, it's a very different sound. Never being one to rest on her artistic laurels, Carly Simon does not limit her creative juices. She's also a writer. She has just finished her fifth children's book, Midnight Farm. As soon as we thought of the name, it conjured up many images from as if this place, as if this farm were to come alive at midnight and all the animals and the vegetables were to be putting on their clothes and the trees were to start singing and the animals start rocking out. And my two godsons named Jules and Noah would be awakened by the cacophonous sounds of animals and vegetables singing together. When you're filling out a form for something, and it says occupation. Is it one thing that you put down? <laughs> oh, God. Come on, you're filling out an insurance form. It says occupation. Carly Simon. Uh, well, I usually put musician, but now I see that that's, that that's limiting me somewhat. Because, yes. All right, so, so in, the, in the future, I'll put uh, artist. <laughs> 
Well, the bleep was necessary. Well, while we were listening to Chantal talk to Carly Simon, we were all in the studio trying to figure out what's our favorite Carly Simon song. We've got the list down to about 20. You can see the second part of Chantal's interview with Carly Simon tomorrow. He's the kind of a man I love to be a singer. I think of myself more as a singer song songwriter, and therefore I sing my own messages. I sing my own sorrows, my own solutions to problems, my own, you know, situations. And these songs are other people's situations, but I can put myself, I can step over into their, you know, into that scenario really easily. Don't look for me. And as a child, I used to, I, instead of watching the cartoons that my friends were watching or or shows like I Love Lucy and, and Howdy Doody and things like that, I would watch these dark movies. I can't get you know, people would look at you and say, you're beautiful, you're talented, you're gifted, you have extraordinary children, a beautiful home, and they would envy you. Are they right to envy you? That's up to them. That's up to them. But you know, you can never, you can never really envy somebody unless you know their interior space, mm -hmm. by which I mean what goes on in their minds, because that's what you're left with when you're alone. That's what you're left with when you're, you know, that's really all you have. So the, the idea is to make those thoughts and those things that go around in your mind pleasant and happy and constructive and about giving. And that's what I try to do, because I think I was born with a somewhat pessimistic nature. Mm -hmm. And I think along with the pessimism, mm -hmm. and which, is al which also gives rise to my anxiety attacks and my fears of going on stage and so forth, there's also a great enthusiast in me. Mm -hmm. I don't have a graph that goes along like this. I've got one that really zooms high and low. And I'm lucky to have a husband, by the way, who really who really understands those zooms and he somehow sails like this in and amongst my waves mm -hmm. because I don't think you can have two people who go like this <laughs> you know you'd think we would be better at relationships just as a whole I mean you sing about it so I figure you have insight well I think that relationships have always been hard but when the rules break down with all the revolutions and feminism and so forth we've lost our sense of who's the boss if there's a boss and a lieutenant, it's a lot easier because you know that you have to ask his permission to do something. Yeah. You know, but, but without a clear boss, it's really hard because there's a power struggle. And while there's a power struggle, it's going to take a while for us to sort of recognize that it may be better for him to be a boss in some areas and for you to be a boss in other areas. But, there, but you can't have two bosses. It just doesn't work that way. Carly Simon, in command of herself, certainly.